really good in school with color associations, right? Well, you got part of it right. Now, let's see in the church that we can get excited about serving other people. Let's get excited about bringing canned tomato juice. Tomato sauce, excuse me. Tomato sauce. Let's get excited about this. Have you ever gotten excited about a can of tomato sauce? No? The way you ought to laugh, you gotta say no to that. So I would say let's get excited and share the joy of Jesus and let's bring tomato sauce and then come next Sunday to hear what we're going to ask you to bring the following Sunday. Yeah, it, 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 you're looking at me like, Pastor, you've really lost it on this one. Well, maybe so. But we will find out. This is all to bring the happiness and joy back into our worship. We need all the people back in worship to have a good time to share the joy of Jesus and to be a part of this together as we, as we worship our Lord. So, what do you think the first, or what, what do you think that we will, why do you think we have the first item, and what do you think the emphasis is? That's what I want you to be thinking about this week as you purchase your tomato sauce. Finally, I want to remind you about some become, upcoming events. We're getting back to normal again. We're getting more things going. Rally Day will be held on November the 14th. All Saints Sunday is November the 7th, and we would like, if you'd like to have a loved one, remember that the sheet in your bulletin to fill out and place it in the offering plate this morning, so please fill that out. Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, and Tim Joe is so good with color transformation, understanding color. What color are you going to be asked to wear next Sunday? Red. Red. There we go. We're, hey, that's a good response. That means you all understood that it's going to be red. So we'll see all of you in red next Sunday. And we will have a good time worshiping our Lord as we go back and remember what Reformation Sunday means to the Lutheran Church. Yes, that is all I have. Oh, now, I ask that you then prepare your hearts and your minds for this worship service, that you pray for those that are in nursing homes, that are in assisted living, that can't be worshiping you, we're with you right beside you because of health reasons. Bring them up in prayer and ask God to be blessings on these kind of people as you listen to our pre-worship music. Thank you.
forgive us. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love our kindness, and walk humbly with thee. Turn us in a new direction. Show us a path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on our journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. As a call of an ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me singing a very familiar hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
Please be seated as we continue with an anthem by the chapel choir, Holy, Holy, Holy. Together, a great company. They shall return here. 
With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Hebrews. Human priests of old offered sacrifice for their own sins and served only until their death. In contrast, Jesus is God's Son, the holy, sinless, resurrected high priest. Death did not terminate his priestly service, but through his death he has interceded for our sins. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him. <coughs> he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once, for all, when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the gospel explanation. Take the case of the blind man that's in the gospel lesson for today. 
Archimaeus was a resident of Jericho, and he made his living almost like all the blind people of that day, and, and, and the living went by begging. So he sat there along the roadside asking for alms. One day a large crowd of people came down the road toward him, and he heard them, he couldn't see them, but he could hear what they were saying, and hear that there was evidence that they had a purpose for their journey. They were following a well-known teacher, Jesus of Nazareth. Bartimaeus had, had heard that this Jesus person had extraordinary power. So Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus passing by. He began to shout out very loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, can you imagine how that might have made people around him feel? Well, many of them began to be quite uncomfortable because of all this yelling coming out the top of his lungs, said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus was making a scene. He wouldn't be quiet. He shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me! Son of David, have mercy on me! You know, we were in that same situation. We were trying to get something to shut up. You know, we see you here every day when we cross through the road. Just be quiet. We won't hear you then. Jesus then did something miraculous in one sense in that way. He heard the man through all the crowds and everything around him. He stopped and he said, Call him. And that was referring to Bartimaeus. So those with Jesus called Bartimaeus, and they said to him, Take heart, on your feet, he is calling you. And Mark tells us that he threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet, and came to Jesus. No hesitation on Bartimaeus' part. No embarrassment, just unbridled enthusiasm and faith. Why do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And Bartimaeus said, Rabbi, I want to see again. I'm sure Jesus knew what he really was up to, what he wanted, but he wanted Bartimaeus to say it. And listen to Jesus' answer to him and to his request. He said, Go, your faith has healed you. Immediately Bartimaeus received his sight. And then Mark says, he followed Jesus along the road. Your faith has healed you, said Jesus. And Bartimaeus said, could see because of his faith. Think about that for a moment. Through faith, powerful things can happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Remember the old phrase that faith can move mountains? And that is so true. If we just have faith in our Lord. He is in control. He helps us in our daily living. He is the one that we follow. He is the one that will be there when we need it the most. When we celebrate, yes, is there with us as well. Do you understand what we're saying when that faith can move mountains? Faith caused Bartimaeus to seek Jesus' help in the very first place. The problem with many disadvantaged people in this world is that they have no hope. Bartimaeus could have easily done that. He could have just given up. Nobody would have blamed him because he was blind and he was on the road, had no source of income, and he was just there all by himself. Why doesn't he just give up? He could have accepted his faith as a non seen person in society, unequipped to help him overcome any kind of disability that he may have. But he didn't do that, did he? He never gave up. He had faith that he was going to get through all the obstacles that were before him. Many people with far more blessings than Bartimaeus have given up. And maybe you know some people that we're talking about. Bartimaeus quite literally leaped at this opportunity to be with Jesus. I hope that whatever your situation is today, you aren't among those who have given up. It was faith that called Bartimaeus and helped him to see. Secondly, it was faith that caused Bartimaeus to speak up. When he had heard that Jesus was passing by, Bartimaeus began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His friends became embarrassed by his behavior. Nice people don't make scenes, right? That's what we do. That's what we do talk. Yes, and a lot of nice people end up spending their lives on the road begging. Have you ever heard the expression, the squeaky wheel gets 
Is it against the Greeks? Well, there's a time for speaking up. There is much truth in that little verse in James chapter 4 that says, You have not because you ask not. In 1962, a 14-year-old boy by the name of Robert Weiss wrote to President John F. Kennedy's personal secretary, who at that time was Evelyn Lincoln, and requested the president's autograph. Autograph. Now, they get a lot of these kind of requests, I'm sure. But within a few weeks, Evelyn honored the boy's request by sending him a facsimile of Kennedy's signature in the mail. But what happened was that that began a relationship of correspondence that lasted 33 years. 33 years. Impressed with White's passion for presidential history, Mrs. Lincoln gave him thousands of documents and mementos. She saved whatever she could. Even those little doodles that JFK drew during his meeting, that little doodle pad, she sent it to this man. She sent it to Robert. Robert White has now the largest private collection of Kennedy memorabilia in the world. He has over 50,000 items. Over 50,000 items. Receiving, begin, receiving begins with the courage to ask. And then waiting with patience. On the Lord. So if you don't see something that's going right, do diligence in trying to correct it. But if it's not going to correct, pray. Take it to the Lord and let the Lord intervene in one way or another. You have not because you ask not to the Lord. It was faith that Bartimaeus caused Bartimaeus to seek Jesus, and it was faith that caused him to speak up and ask for help. It was also faith that caused Bartimaeus to leap up and come to Jesus. Notice that Bartimaeus called Jesus son of David. And I think that if you look at the Bible, you see that this is one of the first Jews to recognize Jesus as one of being is spoken of by the prophets. Bartimaeus was a believer, not a sinner. Many people heard about Jesus, but did not respond to Jesus at all. But Bartimaeus believed that he was who he said he was. It was faith that Bartimaeus it was faith that caused Bartimaeus to seek help. It was faith that caused him to speak up. And it was faith that caused Bartimaeus to leap up and come to Jesus. And it is that same faith that we're talking about, that we're asking you to have, you to use, that you to hang on to, that healed Bartimaeus. The point is, the spiritual can affect the physical in our body. If we have burdens like stress or, or resentment, our anger, our frustration, our despair, all these things that overwhelm us, it, can, it will be much more difficult for the body to do its healing work if we're in the midst of those emotions. If we will work on our faith, trusting in God, letting go of anxiety, practicing forgiveness, Believing that there is help for us often will that will make it more self self-fulfilling and be more of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Bartimaeus trusted God, trusted Jesus, and he was healed. One more thing. Faith caused Bartimaeus to follow Jesus after his eyesight was restored. Very key part to the to the text today. This is the most important thing that I can see out of the story is that many people pray for healing, many people pray for guidance, many people pray for Jesus' interaction in their life, but after they got what they had prayed for, the healing, the emotional restoring, or whatever it may be, they are no different spiritually than they were before. When the scale fell off of Bartimaeus' eyes, they also fell off of his soul. And he followed Jesus from that day forward. Come on, accept the healing. Respond to Jesus with joy. And respond to Jesus with that joy. Let him know what he has done for you spiritually. What he has done for you physically. What he has done for you emotionally. Share that joy of Jesus with others. Let the joy of Jesus come out. Even if it's in a can of tomato sauce. Let's get excited about Jesus. And not just sit there like there's nothing for us to do. We can be excited about the joy of Jesus. And what that joy means for my life and for your life is different. 
But I think that if we have all these people around listening to us on YouTube and the radio, all these people that are worshiping with us now, and we all share the joy of Jesus, can you imagine what would happen? You can think of words of water, but you can't think of truth. I could preach all I want to about faith and faith that we should be acting like I have over the last three or four months, giving you suggestions of how to do things in life. But unless you take the initiative to follow and to do these things, what's going to happen? Nothing. And you're going to be sitting there just staring at the wall. I don't mean to be negative or anything, but it takes a little bit of our initiative to get excited about things and to be there to help the people in our congregation, first of all, that are in need of this joy. And we've got a lot of people that are, that are sick and are going through some real struggles with their life, but we need to be there to bring the joy of Jesus. It's not hard to be happy about the Lord being your Savior. To bring a smile to your heart and your face right now. Part of Mayus' experience was like being born again, both physically and spiritually. It was faith that kept Part of Mayus from giving up. And it's our faith that's going to keep us from giving up and continuing on and trying to be the church that we should be, the community that we should be, and the individual Christian that we should be. And it's up to us to take the movement. It's up to us to do things. It is up to us to get involved in Bible study. It is up to us to serve our Lord. It is up to us to have fun while we're doing all of that. Three things that are important for all ministries. Social, service, and Bible. And we need a balance of that in our church. And if we don't have that balance, we're going to be a little bit off our rocker, so to speak. Maybe the pastor called his rocker this morning. I don't know. But we'll be a little bit off our rocker. So we need to get back to where we're balanced correctly. So that we can be a fully balanced person serving our Lord in all that we say and do. Because it's faith that caused Bartimaeus to leap up with joy in his heart and say, Jesus is going to do something for me. That's what he felt in his heart. And what happened? Jesus healed him. It was faith that healed his eyes. It was faith that caused Bartimaeus to follow Jesus after his eyes were healed. And Bartimaeus wasn't just another beggar. He was a man that was filled with faith and filled with joy of Jesus being a part of his life. If Jesus is a part of your life, let's see the joy. Let's see that happiness. Let's pray that God will give us that kind of faith. Let's pray that God will bring that joy that we let go, come back into our lives and into our ministry. Because it's so much more fun having the joy to spread with one another. Pray that God will give you that kind of faith too. Because it's that kind of faith that will move mountains. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes you from understanding. Keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand if you're able to sing the next one? My hope is built on nothing but.
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated and you will now receive the offering. Please join us in this. 